I think these are really cool because you can actually control the dark tint from the glass. And sandwiched in between these two sheets of glass is actually a layer of liquid crystal material. So when voltage is applied to the electrodes, it basically turns dark and filters out bright light. And depending on how much voltage is applied, you can actually control the tint or the opaqueness of the glass. So this special piece of glass is actually called a liquid crystal light valve. It's also known as an LCD controllable blackout panel, and they're mainly used in welding helmets because it can protect your eyes from pretty bright sparks. Okay, so here's how the circuit works. A resistor is wired across the positive and negative pins on the female JST connector. This is then wired to the electrodes on the blackout panel. A slide switch is wired in line with a JST extension cable. Then a LiPo battery is plugged into the slide switch. So whenever the slide switch is set on, the glass will become tinted. Once it's off, the resistor will actually drain the voltage and make the glass translucent again. The frame and the arms were 3D printed using PLA filament on the Sigma 3D printer from BCN3D. Pedro actually designed these parts in Fusion 360, so the files are free to download and modify. Some of the features do require some support material, but they're pretty easy to set up and remove. To start this project, we'll begin by working on installing the resistor to the female JST connector. To do this, we'll need to straighten out the electrodes. We did this with a pair of flat pliers. Obviously, be careful not to break off the pin, so it's best to do it slowly. You might find they're a bit too close together to actually fit the resistor, so we can bend them apart. Next, we'll bend the two legs from the resistor so that they can cross each other. Then we can wrap them around the two electrodes from the JST connector. This way, it sort of stays in place after that, we can just solder them together. Once everything is soldered, we can then trim off any excess using flush snips, but be sure to leave some of the metal because we still need to attach wires to them. Next, we'll work on the slide switch and battery. We'll build a JST adapter so that we can easily disconnect the battery from the slide switch. Cut the wire short from the male JST connector, then connect the positive wire from the JST cable to one of the electrodes on the slide switch. Then solder the ground wire from the JST cable to the negative electrode on the female JST connector. And lastly, we'll connect the positive wire from the JST cable to the remaining electrode on the slide switch. Now we can start on the assembly. We'll do a dry fit and set the glass onto the 3D printed frame. Next, insert the nub from the enclosure arm piece and measure the distance you'll need to connect the wire from the electrode on the glass. Then do the same for the positive connection. We'll strip and tin the tips of each wire and trim the electrodes on the glass short. Now we can solder the wires to the shortened electrodes. Next, connect these wires to the female JST connector, the one with the resistor. Now we can insert the glass into the frame by pressing it until it clicks into place. We'll press fit the ground wire into the little channel that runs across the frame. Next, connect the female JST connector and slide switch adapter together. Insert the slide switch into the enclosure and set the actuator through that little opening. Now we can plug in the battery and fit it into place. The excess wiring can be tucked through this little slit. Lastly, we'll use pieces of solid core metal wire from a paper clip as pins for holding the arms to the frame, or better yet, just use a piece of 175 filament. And that's it. Now we have a pair of cycloptic glasses with controllable tint, which I think is pretty cool. Although I can't wear them because I need contacts. Obviously you could totally reuse this circuit and make it your own project. I think you could embed it into some sort of helmet or maybe attach an elastic band. That could work really well. I want to give a big shout out to Naomi Wu who inspired Lamar and Phil to go out and stock these blackout panels. So if you're looking for other cool project ideas, be sure to check out her projects. I'll have it linked below. Hey, I want to hear what project ideas you have, so please put them down in the comments below. That's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you did enjoy this week's project, you can let us know by hitting that like button. I'd also really appreciate it if you guys shared this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the Adafruit channel for new DIY projects every week.